Hello, everybody, and welcome to Uncle Tom for Christ. Thank you for joining me today, guys, on this Sunday, April 28th, 2024. It is 7.58 a.m. Eastern Time as I speak and record. Praise God, praise God, praise God. We're just going to praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. And I thank each and every one of you for joining me, and I praise God for every single one of you. I believe we're, man, we're growing. I think we're up to like 121 subscribers. No, 121 don't watch these videos, folks, but we're growing. We're growing. And I say we, again, this this channel may be titled Uncle Todd for Christ, but this is all of us, one one body, folks. We need to understand that. I just praise God for the ability to get on here, read these devotionals, read the scriptures, the main part, and allow him just to speak to me and whatever he says. I just, it's just a true blessing to be able to do this and for you guys to join. I truly do appreciate it. Uh, today, we're doing part two of a continuation from yesterday on stress relief so stress relief part two and uh this is a good one this is a good one this is another one speaking personally to me guys i hope it speaks to you as well um our scriptures i've highlighted second chronicles not familiar with that a lot guys i'm not uh chapter 15 and i've highlighted verses 11 through 15 because verse 15 is our lead off and another one, kind of like yesterday, it, by itself, it's it's beautiful. It's the word of God, so it's beautiful. But to read it in context about what's being said, that to me, that's the important part. But do what you will. I've got it highlighted. Click on it, read it. If you want to read that whole chapter, it's a short one. I, I did. It's just, it's good stuff. It's the word of God. The one that chose you, created you, and loved you, and offered you salvation. Gives us his word, his Bible. Like this, I love this little background, this little girl sitting on the bench reading. That's so awesome. But uh, so Second Chronicles 15, verse 15 reads this. The Lord gave them rest round about. Again, by itself. OK, well, who gave who rest? Gave what, what happened? And that's why our uh, what I've got highlighted may help explain it a little bit further. So part two of stress relief reads this. The first protective measure against stress is to make sure we take a weekly Sabbath rest. Got to rest, folks. These bodies, these minds, these souls, these spirit. This entire vessel needs rest. You will get run down. You will get ragged. You cannot be used effectively to do the work of God that we're called to do. If you're a complete train wreck, you can't. You can't. Not just man's opinion. Not just doctor's opinions. It's the word of God's truth. It's not God's opinion. It's God's truth. Amen. Each Sunday. Here we go. Folks, they, they don't know that this is a Sunday, but today is each Sunday. Worship with your fellow believers and then take the time to rest. Really rest, guys. And I think this is God speaking to me personally, hopefully speaking to somebody other than just me. Today, I'm going to church. I really don't feel like it. I would truly rather stay home and just listen to worship music, spend time in his word alone. I've done that in the past. It's been phenomenal, been beautiful. But we have our church dinner today. And something that I do is I take the rolls. Now, I could easily go up and take the rolls, drop them off, and come right back home. But God's not putting that on my heart. You understand? But to go and to be blessed and privileged to praise and worship him, it's such a blessing and an honor that we have to do that, to go to a place together and fellowship together. But I am looking forward to coming home, getting comfortable, kicking my feet up, listening to some worship music, do a little bit of reading, things like that, guys. These are all blessings from God. Um, spend time in his presence, reading God's word in Christian literature. This little girl right here in the background, reading the word of God. Feed your mind as you rest your body. Like guys, when, and I've done it, and it, it seems like those are the days that don't go so well. You get tired, you want to relax, you kick up your feet. I throw a movie on, a movie that doesn't glorify God. You know, there's a lot of violence, vulgarity, profanity, things like that. Guys, that does not rest. That does not rest the mind, body, and soul. It does not. And we got to be careful what we're putting in our ears and what we're putting in our eyes. Constantly, constantly, constantly. The spiritual battle we're in. Um, in your quiet time, give the spirit a chance to light up upon you, giving you discernment. Whew. God, should I or should I not watch this? Should I or should I not listen to this? Should God will tell you. He will tell you realigning your priorities and allowing you to see your life circumstances needs and desires through the eyes of god but we got to slow down and do that folks 
We got to get alone. Jesus got alone multiple times to be with the Father. We got to get alone, get back in alignment, get get that spiritual cleansing. You can't you can't go out here and drive your car nonstop without going to the gas station and filling up. You got to get fuel. And the Word of God, is, I believe, that the Holy Spirit fuel is what we need constantly. We need it. We need it nonstop poured into us. Second, this is our second protective measure. Take a daily Sabbath rest, something our Lord did on a regular basis. Luke 5, 16 says, Jesus, here we go. Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. We spoke about that yesterday or the day before. Go into your private place. Be alone so you can be alone with the Father. No distractions, no outside disturbances. Say it almost every video. Do this daily. Take the phone off the hook. Turn your cell phone off. Get in your car and drive somewhere secluded and private, somewhere beautiful like this background. And I found some backgrounds, people out in the uh, out in the woods, on mountain sides, on creek sides, river beds, ocean fronts, reading the Bible. Truly, truly peaceful. Getting alone, but making sure it's so quiet. A lot of you, maybe uh, I do it a lot. Um, I have Alexa. If you're familiar with that, you can say, Alexa, play babbling brook. And you'll hear this nice, peaceful babbling book, brook sound in the background. And it just, for me personally, guys, it just works. It works for me. Let's just keep going. Um. Jesus often went through lonely places and play. When you eagerly seek the Lord throughout the day, not just Sunday, eagerly seek him throughout every single day, you will find him and he will give you rest on every side. But you got to seek him. Don't expect him just to show up and say, hey, you look tired. Can I, is there anything I can do for you? The guys, we got to seek him. We got to seek him diligently. Um, third, our third protective measure, focus on and trust in God. In times of anxiety, we tend to let fear replace faith. But, but guys, sound like a broken record? It should. It's, if you're walking in fear, you're not walking in faith. They cannot coexist. It's impossible. It, it, it's, it's, it's an oxymoron. It's just an oxymoron. If you're walking in faith, fear has got to go. Are you trusting God? That's like the biggest question we can come, we can get from all of this that we've been reading lately. We feel like Job. What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. And that's in Job chapter 3, 25 through 26. And I just want to touch base on this real quick. So many people think that God put these things on Job, that God destroyed his family, that God destroyed his property, his, his belongings, his livestock. No, God did not do that. People say, well, God let Satan get a hold of him. Well, right here, right here, and this has come up multiple times in the past. That's why I think this is important. That is fear. That is Job's fear and fear of what his, thinking of what his children may be doing. Not even sure if they are or not, but in fear that they're living in a way. That fear opened up that door, that that step. It gave, it gave Satan a foothold to move into his life. So Job is the one to open the door to Satan, not God, not God. So guys, it's something we got to, we got to keep, we got to quit, I don't know how I want to say this, like translating the Bible the way we think it is. And the only reason I say this, because it makes absolute sense and there's so much scripture that'll back this up. Again, there's going to be a lot of people disagree with that. And there's the, you know, there's, there's a verse, I believe it's in Job, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. God does not take away, folks. God does not take away. Um, constantly remind yourself that with Jesus, you have nothing to fear, nothing. You can trust in the one who will never leave you nor forsake you. Continually shore up that trust by claiming God's promises. There's a whole book we got right at our fingertips full of his promises. Reading the word, little, little example right here, today's background, and applying it to your life. Don't just be hearers of the word, be doers. The word says that. Don't just read it and be like, oh, okay, I feel now, now go out. Now go out in the streets, make disciples, share that good news, share that word of God with people. Don't just keep it to yourself and applying it to your life. Keep your eye on Christ, not your fears or circumstances. Guys, this is a beautiful recap of what we've been discussing since January 1st. What are you focused on? Are you focused on the headlines? Are you focused on the word of God? 
You focused on the doctor's reports, what the neighbor said, what the news says, or you focused on what the word of God says. God's the one that chose you. God's the one that formed you in your mother's womb. God's the one that gives you a heartbeat. God's the one that's promised you salvation. God's the one that sent his only son to die for you. God's the one that now has the Holy Spirit growing inside of you. Guys, we could go on and on, but we would rather look at that headline, the headline today's paper, and just let that totally take away the truth of God. And uh, it's just things we got to we gotta constantly remind ourselves daily. Again, get alone, find that daily time, make it whatever you got to do. If you got to drive an hour somewhere where you know it's absolutely secluded, where there's no power, no traffic, no trains there, whatever you have to do, guys, make it quiet. Put in earplugs and put babbling brook on while you're reading the word of God. Whatever it takes, guys, make it as intimate as you can and just let God do his thing in you and through you for his glory. Amen. So thank you for joining me today. And we will finish up part three tomorrow on Monday, Wildlife Monday. Praise God. So until then, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see what the Lord says then. I love you guys.